Now that we've familiarized ourselves with the main parts of the nephron, now let's take a journey through each one of these places. Now, the first thing I, I mentioned is that, of course, the afferent arterial um, is wider than the efferent arterial. And what that does is it causes higher pressure in this area. And higher pressure will force certain molecules to move out and then other ones will stay in, depending on how large they are. So if we take a look inside this glomerulus, which is trapped inside this Bowman's capsule, if something makes it out of the glomerulus, get squeezed out, then it'll come down this way and head towards the proximal convoluted tubule. If it doesn't get out, then it will exit over here and go back into the bloodstream as, as normal. So remember that the kidney is taking in all this blood and it's basically filtering it. This is where this ultra filtration is happening, filtration at the very fine level. Uh, some of you may buy water filters to keep your water clean. If you buy a really expensive one, then it's probably really good at even removing some of the small uh, things out of the really small particles out of, out of the water. I recently bought an air filter that has a HEPA filter built into it and it claims that it can actually keep, take, remove from the air really, really small particles, small enough that it would, even would pass through uh, some of the masks that people wear to try to prevent themselves from getting sick. Um, anyways, I digress. If you take a look down here, this next diagram, okay, keep in mind, I'm looking in here, looking in here in this particular area here boom so if you take a look inside here this is just for comparison this is a blood cell that's a blood cell right there and uh, this is pretty big so it's you almost can't get very many blood cells squeezing past each other inside this tiny little tube here and this is uh, the plasma just the uh, watery portion of the blood that's contained in here I should color this red but I won't um, so we're looking inside the glomerulus the important things here, there are some important things on this diagram and some that are just like structural, not so important. Um, a key thing here is that the wall, okay, the wall of this capillary is actually uh, fenestrated. I need to add this word, fenestrated. Go. The walls here are fenestrated. Fenestrated means it has holes in it. Um, there was a thing on Friendster, or if it was a Friendster, I'm so old. Friendster or Facebook or MySpace or something where you could, you know, you could poke your friend or, you know, hug your friend. There's one thing you could do that was called defenestrate your friend, which sounded very uh, offensive. But I looked it up and it just means to throw your friend out of a window, which I guess is pretty bad as well, too. So that's how I remember that, fenestrated. So with these little holes here, it's kind of like a mini filter. And this mini filter allows all small, wallo mo small molecules, small molecules to pass through, including water, ions, glucose, and, and urea. These are all really small things. Remember, our goal is to get rid of urea, but a lot of these things are actually going to pass through. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's dumb. If the point of the kidneys is to help us filter out their urea, shouldn't it just take the urea away and then not force us to lose all our glucose? Well, that's a very sucky thing, and that's why the rest of this uh, actual nephron is going to be very important. So I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that in a second. The key thing, if you have big molecules in here like hormones and things like that, hormones are too big and they will not actually be passed out. So they will actually stay in the bloodstream. In fact, as measured, uh, they say the maximum size is 68,000 molecular mass units. And so you can look up what types of hormones are too big uh, to, to pass through, but the majority of them are going to be too big. Think about the size of water, H2O, ions, Na+, potassium ions, glucose, C6H1206. It's still a relatively small molecule compared to um, something like testosterone. This part I've come to at last because this is relatively unimportant. We're just talking about the outer layer here that holds it all together. It's called the basement membrane. Two other kind of weird alien looking cells. Looks like you should be writing an essay about these guys, but they're really just here for structural support. They're called podocytes. So once again, what are we looking at? This is a cross section through the arterial in the glomerulus. And anything that can squeeze out through here will end up traveling down this path and then continuing on over here. And what did we say could squeeze through here? Everything that's a small molecule. Everything that's a small... Oh, no, I've erased part of my... Oh, no! Okay, that's all right. Okay, we imagine these smiley faces are not here. Any small molecule can actually make it all the way through. The large molecules like hormones, so the path of a hormone, a large protein, would go like this. 
and then come back out. The path of urea is small, so going and it's going to pop right through. The path of water will probably pass through as well too. Uh, salt, some small salts will pass out. And guess what? Glucose actually passes through. But I know that if glucose, things keep going on down here, it's going to head towards the bladder and turn into part of my PP. So I'm going to have to solve that problem because I know that healthy PP doesn't actually have glucose in it. In fact, back in the day, people used to taste their patient's PP and find out if they were diabetic or not. So that's not a good thing. Because if you have too much, if you have glucose in your PP, that means it's too, uh, too high in concentration in the blood, and uh, your insulin and pancreas aren't doing their job. Anyways, so just just make sure you understand this first section here. What's happening inside the glomerulus? It's happening here. Uh, all the small things will squeeze out. We'll deal with that a little bit later when we get to the proximal convoluted tube. But for now, that was the first step on our journey to create urine. <laughs>